now we come to to the point that we're going to uh, clay up the lips and the nose and uh, basically the front of the muzzle just a wide thin layer of clay I like to apply it to the upper lip and feather it out to the sides and also the top part of it I like to feather it inside the nose and um, as you can see I'm trying to um, basically uh, shape up the middle of the lips as well as uh, the, uh, the, uh, the edges of the front that goes inside the mouth it's quite self-explanatory by looking at it and that's uh, that's all I do for the front and the cling and now I'm applying a generous coat of hide paste to all around the face and forehead around the eyes just like to make uh, make it quite actually slippery when I'm sliding the uh, or taxing the cape on it that's why I, uh, I put a lot of glue underneath there a lot of it will get uh, pushed around so uh, the more I have in there sometimes it helps so as you can see I have the cape totally inside out rolled so I can unroll it without getting any glue on the hair. I'm very sensitive about getting glue on the hair. I always get him to anyway, so a little bit will always get to the edges of the hair and uh, before it sets or it gets totally dry, I, I like to wash it right away. Um, when I apply the cape upside down on the animal, it allows me to work a little bit cleaner so I don't get the and glue on the hair as I said and also this allows me to work alone by myself and uh, spread the cape around the form without worrying about anything else so with these tacks or these uh, fine awls that I've purchased actually it's one of the best purchases I've done it works like a um, basically an assistant it holds the capes in place till I'm really um, ready for sewing it up so now as you can see I have um, installed the ears already inside the skin and I'm trying to bring the forehead right in the middle adjust the skin exactly where it needs to be there you go a lot of glue has been rubbed on the eyes as you can see you're gonna have to clean it up later Covering the face, we'll leave it for later. I like to do them last. And I'm gonna speed up the video here. So, sewing the back of the cape around the mannequin, which is just um, quite straightforward. I'll go as fast as possible to save some time in the video. Now this cape is sewn and I still roll it backward to make sure that the, the mannequin is really covered with hide paste even around the edges and everything I really like the glue to glue down the hide thoroughly it adds to the life of the mount overall anyway I roll it down do the same thing around the brisket and the top of the shoulders
make sure that the skin is aligned exactly where they're supposed to in the middle of the brisket top of the shoulders As soon as I feel that the skin is uh, fairly aligned exactly where I want it, I start stapling it in the backboard so I can cut off the excess and uh, get closer to working on the face. As you can see, I'm pushing around the extra air or sometimes extra glue that have been accumulated under his skin in some areas. Okay, now it's all stapled up and the extra cape has been cut out. Now what I'm doing is trimming the extra skin that I, uh, I still like to have them shorter around the nose, lips and eyes. So they're all nice and clean before I start tucking them in. Water and Q-tips usually does the trick. Roll out all the skins around the eyelids, make sure that they're all rolled out, and then do the same thing with lips and nose. Now what I like to do is um, adding as you've seen it in the other videos, I like to add a little bit of a roll of clay to the upper lip and uh, cut it off where you can see at the bottom of the, on, on the bottom jaw. And I like to feather out the top part of the roll into the lip so it creates a smooth transition. And as I've mentioned before, this roll of clay helps to close the mouth hair to hair properly and uh, it creates a very nice smooth closed natural looking closed mouth cover it up with more height paste if you remember we put height paste here all um, when we, before we put the cape on but as we move around the cape on the mannequin it just removes some of that glue and goes into uh, upper parts of the mannequin so uh, I like to saturate it with glue before I roll down the skin on it again and start tucking the nose and the skins on it I like to make sure that my skin is centered and one of the greater spots to to make sure that your your lip skins are centered is in the middle of the front lips and also aligning it with the center of the nose so I tuck a little bit in the front make sure that the front part of the skin is lined up and then I do a little bit of the corners and then I work all around it to to tuck all the skin in and a little bit of a clay for the lower lip and the lower lip is the last part of the mouth that I finish and I tuck its skin in
to make sure that um, that the skin is not folded into the into the tuck area it's all flattened out and pushed all the way into the gap push the extra height paste around make sure that they don't get accumulated in one spot double check the the upper lip skin make sure that it's totally in center before I start tucking the nose skin inside sometimes I use some pins to hold the skin inside and sometimes I don't it depends on the animal and it depends on the nose the shape of the nose if it if it really lines up and if it really set, sits uh, the skin sits inside the nose perfectly good I don't feel like that I need to put some pin inside inside of the nose and I just um, push in some paper or some uh, plastic um, to keep the nose and skin totally glued inside so now it's time to tuck in the eyelids I like to with my tool with my spatula I like to press the skin on the eye and slowly push it between the clays that way it creates a really nice tuck and um, I can really work the eyelids properly to make sure that the, that the eye skin is perfectly in center and surrounds the eye so there is no extra pressure pulling or pushing the eyelids around the eye it should be relaxed perfectly on the spot so when you tuck it in it's not going to move on you when it dries pushing in the tear duct skin and if you remember that little bit of the clay that we built up around the tear duct after we're done pushing the skin inside the tear duct we can easily close it with the roll of clay that we left in there you can see the sheep is getting some shape to itself and starting to look like a sheep instead of a bunch of skin and, uh, and a mannequin. The ears at this point are still loose. The, the clay ear butts have been installed. The ears of course have been installed before but I have not place them exactly where I want them so they're a little bit loose right now at the end I will push a piece of wire inside of them and uh, keep them in the right spot before they dry out now I'm trying to push some uh, fine pins into the corner of the eyelids to keep it in place Eyes are important to have them pinned in because uh, we don't want that area of our work to shift or move on us when it's drying and shrinking. Pushing some more eyes on, on the left eye right now. Uh, 
uh, what I like to use here for tucking in some plastic into the nose is using plastic like grocery plastic instead of paper because it tends to expand and keeps the skin totally pressured for gluing into the mannequin. I used to, maybe I've said it before, I used to use paper or paper towel but I prefer to use plastic now. See, I'm working with the roll of clay that I put in there, try to close the mouth and create a very smooth closed mouth. That's what I'm doing right now. Slowly pushing it inside. trying to uh, organize the hair stacking on the animal. A little bit of a brush, a little bit of spray water. Brings all the hair pattern into where I want them. <clears throat> this part of the mount is always very pleasing to me. I really like this part. Finishing part. Using a little wire brush, try to comb out all the hair on the face, make it look properly set. A little bit more filling around the face. One thing that, uh, because I'm putting voice over these videos, I'm not sure, and the video, uh, the mount was done a long time ago, but uh, one thing I might have not uh, shown you here in the video is that uh, around the base of the horn, the skin, of course, it's glued on, but I've also used fine uh, nails with, uh, with power nailer. I've used some nails to, to hold the skin around the base till it dries. Right now, as you can see, I'm uh, carding the low spots of the face. So because those are where it's going to drum and the skin is going to, to lift off when it dries. We're fairly coming to the end of this episode as well. Um, I hope you really enjoyed the, sh enjoyed the show. I hope it was uh, some sort of a help if you haven't mounted any sheep or if you have and was looking for other methods or other people doing it. Hopefully this, this won't fit the bill for you. Okay, well, fairly soon the mount is going to be set aside for drawing. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you again next week with another project.